So we're recording. Are we recording? We're recording. Okay, so I'm uh, going to do a little bit of talking and uh, then I'll do a little bit of farming, but I'm going to do a little bit of talking first. Maybe the talking is going to be kind of boring, but this is this is the deal. So I'm, I'm on a piece of property that I've farmed for a good many years uh, now, probably. I think I started farming this in about 20... 12 2012 20 2012 let's say i think it was 2012 now years ago my mom and dad farmed this property uh when i was a kid uh in the late 70s early 80s in the mid well let's see my grandparents farmed this first then my then my dad got mom and dad got that across the way but this here was farmed by my grandparents and my mom and dad farmed across the way now they were both the same property at one time and uh, we used to grow corn and soybeans down here, but due to the uh, lack of interest in hunting and other things like bushes, uh, as farms got abandoned and, and bushes grew up and the deer population grew. So we quit farming here. Uh, we quit trying to grow corn and soybeans here. We weren't really big in hay. Uh, the hay that we did grow was alfalfa, clover, timothy. And although we could have grown Timothy down here, and which we did grow Timothy down here at one point, I remember a couple of fields there, uh, my grandfather had died in 1981, and by 1984 or 5, we were pretty well out of here. Uh, and it's only been hay since then. Now, every once in a while, we will get a person or an individual or a group of people that get this brilliant idea that they're going to come in and they're going to grow a grain crop in a place where there's hay or it has been hay for many years uh, in an area like this. And if you look behind me and around me, all you can see is trees. Well, this farm's 160 acres, give or take, and there's probably only about 55, 60 acres of hay on the farm uh, that we did in total. Uh, but this spring, I got a phone call from the property owner and just this occasion, in such an occasion, where someone decided, hey, I'd like to grow soybeans down on that property. Well, for several years, I've been asked to grow corn or beans down here on a field or two just to, to bring in the deer population because this property was purchased with the sole, uh, with the sole purpose of hunting and, uh, you know, family time and recreation. So... Of course, I'm like, yeah, I'll plant corn or beans down there, but you're going to pay for it. Uh, it's going to cost you like $500 an acre for corn. It'll cost you $250 an acre for soybeans. And, uh, you know, I really don't want to do that because I'm not going to get anything out of it. It's just going to be a total disaster. Well, they were like, well, I don't really, we don't want to pay for it. We just, you know, you're farming our property and uh, we just want some deer hunting. So anyways, uh, a lifelong friend of theirs who lives about ten mi five to ten miles away from here to the east, um, their son was a, is a machinist, and he decided that he wants to get back into farming, which is like, oh my God, this guy hasn't farmed in a long time for himself, probably never farmed for himself. He farmed with his dad, and then he became a machinist, and that was just part-time, little here and there. Well, he's decided he wants to be a full-time farmer now and get away from the machinist thing from what I was told. I'm not 100% sure if that's the exact fact, but that's just the gist of it. So I got a phone call from the property owner and they're like, hey, uh, this guy wants to grow soybeans on there and uh, we're going to let him do it. Uh, I just want you to know which fields it's going to be and uh, please don't put fertilizer or herbicide on him because he doesn't want to you know, have to pay for fertilizer or anything. I said, Oh, he doesn't want to pay me for fertilizer. He can pay for somebody else to put fertilizer on. I said, okay, that's fine. Get out of there, spider. Um, I said, are you serious? He's going to put soybeans in there? He says, yeah. He said, I said, well, this is going to be fun to watch. And he was like, oh, why? Why is it going to be fun to watch? I said, well, because uh, if he puts soybeans down there, there's a herd of deer down in that area that is like 100 per square mile. You're not, and they're all going to funnel to that field, those fields of soybeans. Well, they planted about 30 acres of soybeans uh, on these on this property, leaving me with somewhere around 30, 40 acres left, you know, something like that. Which, you know, whatever. And I better catch it before they take off because they're starting to move. Um, 
and they're gonna get into the light. I'm pretty sure you're probably gonna be able to see them a little bit, but way down in the corner, about half of them have run into the woods already. Uh, there was about 40 deer on that five acres right there. And at the other end of the farm, there is a, a nine acre field or a 10 acre field there. And he's got that with soybeans in it. These beans are this tall. Here, they're this tall because it's around the corner and there's nothing to scare them away. Um, but up at the other end, the beans are about that tall. There might be four pods per plant um, there. So I'm not too upset that they took the ground to put soybeans in because uh, I can actually, the hay that was here on those particular fields that he planted that in was not very good. Uh, wasn't good at all. Now he hasn't put any fertilizer down because I, he put spray down, he sprayed it and he plowed it and he worked the, the piss out of it. And now there's absolutely nothing there. Neither of us are gonna get anything out of it. Uh, the deer look pretty healthy. At least they did look pretty healthy before they took off. But uh, yeah, so that's the deal. Um, this happens every so often to me and other farmers in the area. You get somebody that's got a bunch of money or no brains or both. And uh, they'll find a, a farm that's, you know, looks like it's good ground, but they don't know that it's good ground or not. This is not good ground. Uh, it wasn't terrible ground. It is a bit sandy, but there's a, there's a lot of clay underneath it. So it drains out on the top, but once you break through that upper crust, you're into baby shit. And I mean, it's, it's bad. It's, it's pretty slimy. As a matter of fact, if you look behind me right here, right there on the other side here where I'm mowing, you'll see there's, that's a swamp. And years ago, I, my father had run a moldboard plow down across that to run a drain into this, which worked, except the guy that bought it after we left, he bought this property, um, he moldboard plowed that drainage ditch shut. Now that drainage ditch would go into that group of grass. And then if you look down along the edge here, oh, there's another deer way down there. That one just popped out. I mean, they won't be gone for very long. They probably heard me talking. Um, but there's a drainage ditch here. Now the guy, he did put another drainage ditch there and he runs that to the other end of the field, which dried out this area. But this wet, this field farm is very wet. It's just traditionally wet. Um, and it's a deer hole. That's why we quit growing corn and beans here. What, 30, 1984, 94, 04, 14, 36 years ago, 36 years ago, we quit. 36 years ago was the last grain that was grown on here. Well, no, I'm wrong. The guy that bought it put wheat in here. I don't ever remember him putting soybeans, but he did put wheat and he got nothing. Zero, zippo, zitcha, zilch, wheat, wheat. Then he put Christmas trees in here and they drown. Then he put uh, shrubbery and the deer rubbed their antlers up and down on it and destroyed those. So the only thing you can really grow down here is grass or hay. Now I've made really nice hay here. I've made good mulch hay and I've made excellent uh, feed quality hay here. Uh, and I'm hoping that the guy tells him that he's not gonna do that again. I'm hoping he says he's not gonna do it again because I could probably this fall come in with my drill and drill, um, drill Timothy into that. Timothy and K31, I would put a blend in there and have a really nice stand of of uh of hay you know grass hay uh i like timothy and i like kentucky 31. uh timothy gets a cereal rust mite in it kentucky 31 gets nothing in it you know, grasshoppers can't even eat it they just won't uh kentucky 31 if you make it before the head shoots on it it's very good feed a second cut third cut kentucky 31 very good quality feed if it has the head with the seed in it that's where you have the end of fight and that's where it becomes toxic to beef cattle, horses, and whatever else. So if you know how to make Kentucky 31, uh, you can make it for a really good quality feed. If you don't, you can hurt your animals. But anyway, yeah, that's tall fescue. Anyway, so that was my story for now. I'm just gonna throw this camera on here and you all can watch it mow.
tell you or show you. When I said there was two or three beans per, or two or three pods per plant, I, I gotta back it up with facts. This is it. I might have been wrong. Yeah, no, here's one. There's nothing in there. Nothing in there. These beans don't belong to me, obviously, but there it is. We got one, two, three, four, five pods. There's nothing there. They've been chewed off so bad. There's absolutely nothing in there. Now, these soybeans were planted back in June. Uh, late May, June. No, they were planted in June. He was working this ground in May. Now, here's the soil. It is a clay soil, but it's kind of sandy on the top, like I was saying. It's a sandy clay. It's, it's well, I guess it's not. It's more of just basically clay. I know at the other end it's sandy because I was stuck in it and I was like, holy shit, this is kind of sandy. But uh, yeah, that's what you get. But he actually plowed it correctly. And when he did that, I mean, he plowed it correctly. It's level. I mean, he did a good job of smoothing it out. It's it's probably smoother than it ever was. Uh, if, he, if he's done, which I'm hoping he's done, I'll be able to just no-till timothy seed right into this and it'll grow well but for the most part this is ridiculousness there's nothing i mean even if even if he was we're like two weeks from frost look at this this pot is flat as 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 whatever hey yeah yeah oh, there's some corn so here here this will tell you what happened if you plant corn here the deer have munched that off obviously this isn't a good example, but it's been chewed off junk. So with that corn being in there, that's telling me that these these were bin run beans. Yeah, bin run beans. You know how I would know that? Because uh, when you combine corn and then you combine soybeans, once in a while, some of that corn that gets stuck in the sieves will shake loose and end up in the bin and they'll end up in your soybeans. And that's how you get bin run beans in your soy, or, bin, or volunteer corn in your, in your soybeans. So they're bin run, and I know they're Roundup ready. So someone's breaking the rules. Anyway, I'm gonna get back to work. Thanks for watching. When I was a kid, you saw a praying mantis. It was like a, a treat, you know? We didn't have too many of them. But if you look at the deck of this thing, I just pulled over for the night. I'm just letting my turbocharger cool down. There's gonna be a couple of hundred of them damn things on there. You can see them right up on the tip. They're there. They're all over that motor. There's several hundred of them up here. So they always said that it was like seven years in jail if you killed a praying mantis. Um, I'm probably gonna go to jail for the rest of my life. Is every one of them things that went through there, they can't be in too good a shape. It's crazy how many of these things are up here. Crazy. Anyway. Oh well. It's the end of my night. I'm waiting for my wife, Miss Teresa, to come pick me up. And I have no idea where she's at. She should have been here by now.